Welcome to Corpus Christi Roman Catholic Church in Chambersburg, Pennsylvania for the celebration of the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. Welcome. And we are grateful that you have chosen to spend this time with us via live streaming to offer ourselves to the Lord and encounter Him in the sacred liturgy. As we prepare ourselves to be united through Him, with Him, and in Him, in praise and thanksgiving to Almighty God, for it is truly right and just let us prayerfully anticipate entering these sacred mysteries. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, as we approach the celebration of the Paschal mystery of your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, we come as one sick to the physician of life, as one unclean to the fountain of mercy. Good morning. As one blind Happy to the light Easter of to our parishioners and visitors of needy, Corpus Christi the Lord Parish. Of heaven and earth. We so have I one announcement you, today. Lord, the church celebrates me, Divine Mercy me clean, Sunday each year on the second Sunday of Easter. We will have May a special holy hour the King with of the sung Divine Lords, Mercy Chaplet at 3 humility, p.m. Such contrition and today. devotion. Such Please join us faith, for this special and such resolve and determination as may secure my soul's salvation. Grant, most kind God, that I may receive the body of your only begotten Son in such a way that I may become a loving part of his mystical body and counted among his members. O oh, most loving Father, grant me your beloved Son. While on this earthly pilgrimage, I receive him under the veil of this sacrament, so may I come at last to see him face to face for all eternity. For he lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. Today we celebrate the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass on the second Sunday of Easter. Our Mass intention is for the people of the parish. Our opening hymn is on page 403, Christ the Lord is risen today, page 403.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created, which we sprinkled upon us as a memorial of our baptism. May he help us by his grace to remain faithful to the spirit we have received. Lord our God, in your mercy be present to your people's prayers, and for us, who recall the wondrous work of our creation and the still greater work of our redemption, graciously bless this water. For you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy. For through water, you freed your people from slavery and quenched the thirst in the desert. Through water, the prophets proclaim the new covenant you were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water, which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter have received their baptism through Christ our Lord.
May Almighty God cleanse us of our sins and through the celebration of this Eucharist make us worthy to share at the table of his kingdom. Amen. Uh -huh. For your great glory, for God, for Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God. of the world have mercy on us sins of the world our prayer have mercy on us for you alone are the holy one are the Lord, you alone are the most high, as Christ, in the glory of the Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very reoccurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed so that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Let us be attentive to God's word. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put it at the feet of the apostles and they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord.
His love is everlasting. I was hard pressed and was falling, but the Lord has helped me. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and He has been my Savior. The joyful shout of victory. Thanks to the Lord, for he is His love is everlasting. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Oh, his love is everlasting. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by Him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey His commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep His commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world, and the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now, a week later, his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Christ is risen. Truly, he is risen. Alleluia. 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 Special welcome this morning to our Corpus Christi School Choir assisting us with this joyful day, as well as to those who are being received into full communion in the Catholic Church. So we experience the Lord's gift of new life, not only through hearing God's word, but experiencing that in our fellow brothers and sisters. For these eight days, the scriptures provided to us make it very clear That the resurrection of the Lord was not simply a spiritual experience, but the Lord Jesus in his real human body was raised to a glorious new life. And over and over again, beginning with last Sunday's gospel, proclaiming the resurrection with the empty tomb, with only the shroud and the headpiece remaining. After all, if someone is going to steal his body to make it look like he rose, they would not carry a naked cadaver through Jerusalem streets. Those shrouds proclaim, really, the resurrection of the Lord in his glorified body. And today, we hear it emphasized again. As the Lord shows his hands and his side and invites Thomas not to be unbelieving, but to believe. Truly and really, the Lord has risen in his body to show that God desires for us to share in Christ's victory as the whole person he's made us to be, 
body, mind, and soul. But today, Divine Mercy Sunday, this conclusion of the octave of Easter, God's word and the sacred liturgy helps us to see the depth and the tremendous gift God gives in his divine mercy. We sang that God's love and mercy is everlasting. And more than simply washing us of sin, the stain of disobedience, God desires to remake us and to raise us to the level of being beloved sons and daughters of God. Recall our opening prayer because it highlights the tremendous treasures we receive from that wounded side of Jesus from which water and blood flowed. We prayed, God, give us the grace that people might rightly grasp and rightly understand in what font they had been washed, by what spirit they had been reborn, by what blood they had been redeemed. The font, the spirit, and the precious blood. Notice in them the three sacraments of initiation by which God communicates to us the power of Christ crucified and risen so that we can live our own lives in relationship with God as beloved sons and beloved daughters, as faithful disciples of the Lord Jesus, and as temples of the Holy Spirit. Last Sunday, Easter Sunday, we renewed our baptismal promises. And hopefully that was not simply an intellectual experience, but a deep resolve to grow and put attention on those relationships with Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And today, as we celebrate this reception of these candidates into the full communion of the Catholic Church and being confirmed and receiving their first Holy Communion, it's an experience for us as well that another important relationship, not only with the Blessed Trinity, but with Jesus' Church, enables us to be those faithful witnesses to the world of the reality of the resurrection. In the waters of baptism, we are washed and made beloved sons and daughters of God. Our brothers and sisters already have been baptized in other Christian denominations, and today they desire to be of one heart and one mind, as we heard in the first reading today. That earliest Christian community was of one heart and mind as they gathered around the apostles to be strengthened in their faith in the risen Lord. These candidates today will profess their faith in the church and in receiving confirmation will be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. As Jesus breathed on his disciples on that eighth day, the eighth day, a clear symbol that the, the day of the Lord, Sunday, God is not simply washing us of sin, but raising us to a new level of relationship. And he enables us and empowers us to live that relationship best in his church. With Jesus as the head of his mystical body, the church, we are not only given the opportunity, but all the tools we need to grow and flourish as children of God, disciples of Jesus, and temples of that Holy Spirit. For all of us who are already confirmed, listen attentively as we hear the prayer and the imposition of the sacred chrism by which we as well, and today these candidates, are being sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. A gift, nothing we can deserve or earn, but what we need to live as faithful witnesses to the fact that Christ is risen. You're listening so attentively, I thought you might have fallen asleep. <laughs> the gift of the Holy Spirit. Jesus breathed on his apostles. We hear in sacred scripture another time that breath of God at the very beginning of creation when he brought everything into existence and in that upper room, he breathed on the apostles, giving them the power to reconcile, to forgive sins. The forgiveness of sins and reconciliation is all about a renewed relationship with God and others. It is why in our second reading today, we're told to keep God's commandments because they're not burdensome. They describe how to live in a proper relationship with God and others. 
And in our relationship with others, we're able to draw others to come to recognize as well that the Lord loves us with a divine mercy that is infinite, vaster than the oceans of the world. Be sealed with the gift. Being sealed means not being closed in like a pickle jar that you have to break the seal. Being sealed by the Holy Spirit means being conformed, shaped to be like Christ himself. That we are able to reflect the Lord in his love and compassion to a world so troubled and needing that reflection of the Son to all peoples. Be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. That Holy Spirit is not a dove or flames or wind. It is the third person of the Blessed Trinity. Nothing is more powerful than the love of the Holy Spirit because it's the love the Father has for the Son and the Son for the Father. And my dear candidates, that is who you're receiving today who's sealing you to be witnesses to the risen Lord, that you may be of one mind and one heart, not only with all of us here at Corpus Christi, but believers throughout the world who form the church of Jesus. Thank you for your yes. Thank you for stepping forward to become of one mind and one heart. May you inspire us and may we support you in this process. Again, our opening prayer that we might grasp rightly the font in which we are washed, the spirit by which we've been reborn, and the blood by which we've been redeemed in this octave here at Corpus Christi. We've baptized 20 children and young people. God's new life is abundant and flourishing here. May we rejoice that Christ is risen. Truly, He is risen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Dear candidates, for full reception into the Catholic Church, before you're received, we're going to ask you to renew your baptismal promises. So with a loud voice, respond. Do you reject sin to, as a live, to live in the freedom of God's children? I do. Do you refuse the, the glamour of evil and refuse to be mastered by sin? Do you reject Satan, father of sin and prince of darkness? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, who was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is seated now at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? Dear candidates, of your own free will, you have asked to be received into the full communion of the Catholic Church. You have made your decision after careful thought under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. You have now come forward with your sponsors and in the presence of this community to profess the Catholic faith. In this faith, you will be one with us 
for the first time at the Eucharistic table of the Lord Jesus, the sign of the church's unity. Catholic Church believes. The Lord receives you into the Catholic Church. His loving kindness has led you here. So in the unity of the Holy Spirit, you may have full communion with us in the faith that you have professed in the presence of this family. Amen. I believe to profess that all the Holy Catholic Church... The Lord receives you into the Catholic Church. His loving kindness has led you here. So in the unity of the Holy Spirit, you may have full communion with us in the faith that you have professed in the presence of his people. Amen. Amen. believe and profess all that the Holy Catholic Church believes and proclaims to be revealed. The Lord receives you into the Catholic Church. His loving kindness has led you here. So in the unity of the Holy Spirit, you may have full communion with us in the faith that you profess in the presence of his family. Amen. The Lord receives you into the Catholic Church. His loving kindness has led you here. So that in the unity of the Holy Spirit, you may have full communion with us in the faith you have professed in the presence of his family. Amen. The Lord receives you into the Catholic Church. His loving kindness has led you here. So in the unity of the Holy Spirit, you may have full communion with us in the faith that you professed in the presence of his family. Amen. Please stand. Dearly beloved, let us pray to God the Almighty Father for these, his adopted sons and daughters, already born again to eternal life in baptism, that he will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon them to confirm them with his abundant gifts and through his anointing conform them more fully to Christ the Son of God. Candidates, please bow your heads. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought these, your servants, to new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, freeing them from sin, send upon them, O Lord, the Spirit. Send upon them, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety. Fill them with the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Through Christ our Lord, amen.
Martha, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. George, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Padre Pio, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Bernadette, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Joan of Arc, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Filled with joy and gratitude to God, whose mercy is everlasting, we now turn to God to pray for the church and for the whole world. That led by the successors of Peter and the apostles, the church will boldly proclaim the truth of Easter. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who guide the economy of nations will distribute resources fairly among all peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. That people weighed down by guilt may find pardon and peace in the divine mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our working week may be transformed by the joy of Easter. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the newly baptized and the new folks who have joined the church through First Eucharist and Confirmation, may they find the church both welcoming and challenging as they grow in their journey of faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the members of this community strive to be of one heart and one mind in the risen Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick of our parish 
may find comfort in the divine mercy of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the risen Christ will bring the dead to share in victory, especially Deborah Appenzeller and Christine Horn. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers in the book of intentions and for the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Most merciful Father, as your people continue the work of the apostolic witnesses, hear and grant our prayers, for we ask them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join us in singing hymn 413. Alleluia.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death by, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, Every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offered for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you've been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. 
on the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you again to our Corpus Christi Catholic School Choir. So wonderful to have your voices leading us in prayer today. Also, congratulations and welcome into the church Peggy, Shania, Susanna, Jessica, and Liam. Congratulations on this joyful day. We need you as part of the mystical body of Christ here. Congratulations. Please join us this afternoon for our holy hour that includes the sung Divine Mercy Chaplet at 3 o'clock. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls, Amen. Our closing song is page 425, Jesus is Risen. Page 425, Jesus is Risen. Mm -hmm. 